Hi, how you doing friends? So this is a video of how to replace a switch on a K50. So the first thing I did was to unscrew the rubber boot from the top of the switch itself. And then uh, there is two screws that's on the cover, that's holding the cover of the switch one on the right one on the left you unscrew them and take the cover off so as you can see the middle part of the switch is broken so what you can do guys is take a picture of the wiring inside if you're not sure of how to do this or if you you're afraid of disconnecting something and then forget how it was connected then to take out the switch there's a retaining nut on top of the switch that's holding it against the reverse forward plate you unscrew that retaining nut and then you just take out the plate the uh, forward reverse plate and push down the switch itself and there's also a rubber uh, gasket on there that avoids water from going inside these are the part numbers the one on the right is the switch itself and the one on the left is the the boot for the legs all right so i compare it make sure there's all the connections the same the old one had nine connections at the bottom the new one the same has nine connections at the bottom so they're similar. I compare these two switches, they're all on the new one because there's two different switches for the K50. There is one switch that has six connections at the bottom and there is another one, in this case I'm using it, is the one that has nine connections at the bottom. So this one with nine connections at the bottom, it works find on this k50 so what you do is pretty much disconnect and connect one by one you want to transfer the connections from the old switch to the new switch make sure you're holding the old switch and the new switch on the same position so that you can see where the connections go now um, once I started taking out the connections from the old switch I noticed that the the metal piece that holds the connection onto the switch it, it started coming loose or it started opening so uh, what I started doing you know, every time I was disconnecting I was pressing the the metal piece so I can close the the connector so whenever I put it in the new switch it will hold and it will just um, make it stay on the connect connection as you can see I'm just pressing it keep on pressing it like closing it a little bit so it can you know it can stay tight on the new one and pretty easy you just sit it next to it in the same position and start taking out one by one and if you want if you're not sure how to do this or maybe if you're afraid of doing this what you can do is take pictures once you pull it out take pictures of different angles of the connections so in case say you disconnect two wires three wires at the same time by mistake then you'll remember where they go on the new one because if you don't put those connections in the right place you might burn the new switch and not only that but on top of that then you won't remember how to wire and wire the new switch in case you get a new one after you burn the new one you had already so 
So it's pretty much the same process of transferring, taking out the connection, transferring the connection to the new one, one by one, making sure I'm taking out one at a time, making sure that it goes to the right connection on the new switch. I'm pressing on the tab so it can stay still or it can be tight on the new switch. All of them needed to be pressed like that. So um, talking about the switch, that switch uh, cost like around in the range of 40 to $50 which I think is it's not it's not a bad price because you know a K50 costs about 100 not, I'm sorry a $950 so you want to is fix it with $50 for me it's cheap to fix it with $50 We keep on doing the same process over and over. Pushing the connection out with the flat screwdriver. Pressing on the tab with the needle nose pliers. And we're almost finished with the connections. It's a little tedious because everything is so tight, it's so close together, and we just have to be careful not to disconnect something that we don't want to as we might be we might get lost with all these connections because there there's so many there are like nine connections and it's more like it's more than nine wires all together i believe it's like 12 11 or 12 different wires they jump from one side to the other and then the some of them they just go from the switch to inside the K50. So once I have everything put together, I have every all the connections on the new switch. Oh, I do a little cleanup. I'm cleaning the top where the gasket sits and where the forward reverse plate uh, sits. Yeah, so it can look a little bit more presentable that, than what it was before. So all I do is just, um, all I gotta do is just pretty much, oh, the new switch came with the, little, with the retaining nut already on there, so I had to remove it. I test it, make sure uh, uh, it clicks from one side to the other. Then I slide the switch into the hole and seat the gasket on the switch. And then I place the forward reverse plate on top. Then I screw down the retaining nut and screw down the rubber boot and put the cover back on with the two screws, one on each side. So these are two part numbers. The one on the right again was for the switch. The one on the left is the rubber boot for the legs of the K50.
this is the final product after I install the new switch as you see that's the new boot too that's the part number I'm giving you as well thank you for watching and have a great day